Hello, hello, I'm Alethea Stark, the project coordinator for the National Great Blacks in Wax Journeys Project. Today, we are going to unveil the wax figure of Dr. Freeman Robowski. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tia Taylor with Spotlight on Blacks and Wax. We're here at the Murphy Fine Arts Center located at Morgan State University. So join us now. Dr. Freeman Habrowski is currently the president at UMBC. Dr. Habrowski focuses on science and engineering and education as a whole. And he's also, along with the Meyerhoff Foundation, started the Meyerhoff Scholarship Program to really ignite a passion in, in higher education learning for children especially focusing on minorities in the science and engineering programs. We're going to learn more now about Dr. Freeman Habrowski. So let's go inside the concert center. Uh, Dr. Habrowski is really much in terms of present day educators. One of the best examples that could have been selected for this induction. On a personal note, I thank him for his stewardship of the UMBC for his leadership throughout the Baltimore area and the state of Maryland. But most of all, for his friendship, which goes back many, many, many years. And there are a lot of remarkable things about Freeman that you will soon hear in the presentation that's coming forward from Dr. Musgrove. One of the things that struck me, though, was when Time Magazine gave him this designation as one of the most powerful, influential men in the world, and I was listening on the radio in drive time trying to get somewhere, and I heard that I felt so good that I immediately picked up the phone and called and left word, just tell Freeman we all are proud of him again. But when I turned the radio volume back up, there was Freeman Rabowski being interviewed, and Dr. Rabowski, despite what everybody might think about him, I think is a little shy particularly when he comes to himself. And I'm saying this with all seriousness. He, he's a man of great humility. But I got the sense that day listening to him that I was right when I thought that when it comes to him, he's a little shy because they would just say, oh, Dr. Grabowski, this is so rare, and nobody ever gets this, and here you are at Maryland. And, and throughout that interview, he kept directing the conversation back. He said, well, you know, I thank you very much, but if it had not been for great students at UMBC, but if I didn't have great staff and family administrators, but if my parents didn't raise me white, but if I didn't have a good wife, but if the community hadn't embraced me, he kept giving it back to all of us. And that's a measure, a real measure, a real measure. Dr. has been involved in just numerous civic community activities and charitable causes, giving freely of his time. And there is so little time in the day that he finds a way to do that. I'm going to ask before I bring Dr. Musgrove out if all of the members of the Rorowski family could please stand so that we too might acknowledge all of you. And here to make the formal presentation of Dr. Freeman Rorowski is Dr. Derek Musgrove, who is an assistant professor of what else but history at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Dr. Musgrove. This spring is the 50th anniversary of the Birmingham campaign, one of the epic battles of the Southern Civil Rights Movement. For those of you who are familiar with the Civil Rights Movement and with the Birmingham campaign in particular, you'll know that by mid-April, 50 years ago, things were getting quite desperate on both sides. Civil rights activists had filled the jails to such a point, in fact, that there were no more adult volunteers left to actually go into jail. <laughs> the authorities in Birmingham had become violent, desperate to clear the streets. They had used 
fire hoses and dogs, which would become symbolic of Southern brutality for the next several generations. And determined to break the impasse, Martin Luther King decided at that point, early May, 63, to send students, children, into the streets to see if they could have a breakthrough. In the midst of all the chaos, 12-year-old Freeman Robowski informed his parents that he wanted to march. Now, his parents were principled and religious folk. They had supported the campaign. They had been civil rights activists, in fact, since 1940s. But they couldn't bear to send their only child into the streets. Freeman, rather than the frightening simplicity and earnestness of youth, told his parents that as principled and religious folks, they had to stand by their principles and trust in their God. He didn't quite say it that way. He called them hypocrites. <laughs> and they sent him to his room for sassy. Yeah. <laughs> and once he was in his room, they cried from dusk until daybreak. And the next day, the Robowskis did as they had taught their son. They placed him in God's hands and sent him into the streets of Birmingham. I begin with this story not to give Dr. Robowski some type of civil rights bona fides, but to give you an idea of the essence of the man. And it's that essence I think is so important because it drives UMBC today. It drives his students. There are a choice few among us who, through nature or training, gain a, gain a firm sense of who they are and what is right. The more ambitious among them take that understanding and use it as a solid foundation on which to build a new world. Freeman gave a clear understanding of who he was and what was right from the remarkable women in his life. His grandmother had heard Booker T. Washington preach the virtues of education from horseback in Alabama and had taken them to part. His mother, a teacher, believed that all of her students could learn and took a personal interest in each and every one of them. Freeman took these lessons and added to them a native intelligence, a boundless energy, and a singular determination. And with these three things, he began to do the things that bring us all here today. He graduated from Hampton University with honors at the tender age of 19. He secured a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana five years later at the age of 24. And as if he didn't have enough to do while he was there, he created a tutoring session for minority graduate students, for math minority graduate students along the way. At Coppin State here in Baltimore, he became the boy dean, still in his 30s. And then he had the audacity in 1987 to head to UMBC, a school that in its entire history had only graduated 20 African Americans in the sciences. And he went there for the purpose of creating a program for graduating large numbers of minorities in the sciences. Well, we all know how it turned out. Yeah. In 1988, Freeman created the Meyerhoff Program, which quickly emerged as a national model of training African Americans in the STEM fields. Today, UMBC produces more African American graduates in the STEM fields per year than it had in the, in the entire time before Freeman Robowski got there. It is one of the top producers of African Americans in the STEM fields in the country, and the number one producer of African Americans in the STEM fields among white schools. Along the way, we took the lessons of the Meyerbaum program and expanded them to the entire school. And for the last three years, UMBC has been the number one up-and-coming university in the country. Yeah. His accomplishments have brought accolades and requests for advice from nearly everyone from great blacks and whites on down to Harvard University and the President of the United States. <laughs> and yes, I did have the arrow going in the right direction there. Let me end with this. As a student at City College in 1992, I had the good fortune of working at Great Blacks and Whites Museum on a work study as a senior year practical. And that year in the museum, surrounded by the likenesses of the great men and women of my race, 
was a time of wonderment for me. I can remember quite vividly in the darkness of the museum before the crowds got there, standing before the figures of Frederick Douglass and W.E.B. Du Bois, Soren Person, and other giants of African American thought, wishing that I could have known them, talked to them, and learned in their need. And at the end of the year, I let my invite some wax for UMBC, where Freeman was serving, serving as interim president. I did not know it at the time, but I had gotten what I wished for, a chance to sit at the feet of one of the leading black intellectuals of my time. Thank God for me. Thank God for all of us. That was Dr. Derek Musgrove from UMBC. Wasn't that interesting? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. Hi, welcome to the show. We are here today with Dr. Joanne Martin, founder of the National Great Blacks and Wax Museum. Welcome, Dr. Martin. Tell us what's going on in, at the show today. Well, today we are um, here at Morgan State University for um, the unveiling of uh, four educators uh, for Uplift. Um, it's a, uh, we're having an unveiling uh, ceremony and VIP reception, uh, and uh, we're going to get a chance to salute uh, four amazing, um, groundbreaking educators, Dr. Uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, who founded Bethune-Cookman College in Daytona Beach, Florida uh, in 1904, I think. Um, Dr. Benjamin Mays, who was uh, president for over 20 years of uh, Morehouse College in Atlanta. Uh, Georgia, and Dr. Benjamin Quarles, uh, who headed the um, history department at Morgan State University for uh, close to 30 years, and Dr. Freeman uh, Rabowski, who is president of uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, uh, and who has earned a reputation for graduating uh, more uh, African-American males in the um, science, technology, engineering, and math categories than, uh, than uh, any other college president. So uh, again, uh, educators for Uplift who uh, have worked to build um, historically black colleges and universities who've made their mark on the field of education, and we are going to salute and honor them through the wax figure unveiling today. That's great. That sounds so good. Now, uh, how long is this event going to last? Um, well, the reception will be to, um, today from 12.30 uh, uh, until 2 uh, p.m. And then the unveiling reception is from 2.30 to uh, 5 o'clock. So we get a chance to hear the uh, University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore County uh, Gospel Choir and um, uh, uh, Jubilee Singers, okay. um, some soloists. We have a violinist. Uh, and so it's going to be um, a, a very comprehensive uh, program of entertainment and um, just spirit of uplift. So Dr. Martin, uh, we know that you are uh, expanding the, the museum and uh, we know that this is um, the first portion of it. How long will this uh, expansion, how long will it take for you to open the new museum? Um, well, uh, you're right. This is a very, very important part of, um, of our expansion and, and, and an introduction to, uh, for many people to the expansion project. Uh, we're looking at an ongoing project. We have this, uh, the journey projects, and this is where we're starting the educational journey with this uh, event today. Okay. Um, but we have the spiritual journey and the sports journey and, any, and a, a number of very exciting journeys. And uh, so they will be ongoing. We're looking uh, for the grand opening of the museum to occur around 2016 of the new uh, National Great Blacks and Wax Museum, our block-long uh, museum. We are in the design phase and have um, created an amazing um, design for the museum. And so um, each year uh, we're going to highlight a particular journey mm -hmm. and um, the uh, upcoming journey for 2014 will be the spiritual journey. Great. Thank you, Dr. Martin. I know you have to get back to the event, uh, and we'll be back with more. Thank you. So today we are going to unveil the training of four great American educators. And these four educators represent not only great educators on our colleges and university campuses, past and present, but educators at every level at which we deliver education. You represent 
My sixth grade teacher, Ms. Robinson, who inspired me to believe that I could be anything that I wanted to be when I grew up because she cared about me and the students in her charge. Uh, you represent uh, my 11th grade science teacher, Dr. Williams, who realized, as I did as an early age, Dr. Rabowski, that I was not going to go on to a field in the STEM disciplines, <laughs> yet convinced me that the rigors and discipline of studying chemistry would have benefits uh, in my life, uh, nevertheless. Uh, the four educators uh, who we honor today uh, share uh, a common among them, not only a vast and deep knowledge and understanding in their fields of study, but a deep-rooted passion for and dynamic ability to motivate the students that you have touched. And today with us is Dr. Freeman Rabowski, who is a giant uh, among men and women. And did the Time Magazine to tell us that he was one of the 100 most influential men in the world. You only have one the UMBC Gospel Choir. Look at the achievements yeah. in the chess club. Look at the number of African and Americans coming out of UMBC that are studying in STEM fields. And look beyond that as well to the fantastic work that is being done on that campus under your leadership in the humanities and the social sciences. You are a giant among men. responsibility not just to honor and lift up their service, but to teach the next generation about their work and our history. And that's what the, the museum, the National Great Blacks and Wax Museum, uh, is all about, teaching African American history, teaching Maryland's history, teaching America's history. Uh, you can tell our story as a state and as a nation and as a people only if you're willing to talk about the men and the women who we honor today in this museum. And today our honorees join other prominent Americans like Billie Holiday, Reginald Lewis, and of course, Kwesi and Fume. All of this would not be possible without, without Dr. Joanne Martin and her husband. so hard and sacrificed so much to make your vision a reality. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you very much for your commitment and contribution. As we look to the future, it's important that we continue to learn from our past, and that's why we're going to continue to work in partnership with and make an investment in the National Great Blacks and Wax Museum, and make sure that we share with future generations tremendous work of these educators and all those who are honored in the museum for their great works. Thank you very much and God speak to each other. The next person I'd like to bring to you officially is known as the congressman from the 7th Congressional District of the State of Maryland. Most of you will know him as someone of great passion, someone of great insight, and someone of great purpose, born out of a pain that has shaped him over the years, to cause him to be as he is, and to say that he is a politician would be to miss the point. He is, in fact, our elder statesman, one of the ablest legislators that this nation has ever produced. But most of all, he is a servant, a friend, a leader, and a teacher. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Elijah Cummings. Good afternoon, everyone. It is certainly my honor and my privilege to be here, and I want to, first of all, thank Congressman Fume for his role in so many areas. He and I sit on the board of Morgan State University, and I want to thank Morgan for hosting us. To Joanne Martin, I want to thank you, and I want to thank your late husband, for what you have done. Dr. Martin, as I get older, I'm constantly 
me in search of why God placed me on this earth. Every day I ask God, my number one prayer, is God allow me to see me like you see me. I just want to see what he sees in me so I can be that. You all, you and your husband, had a mission and have a mission to provide a mirror for our people so that they can understand from whence they have come, so they can appreciate where they are, so they can map out where they go. Oh, that's a mission now. And you have taken it and given it every single thing you have. Somebody traveling this road, just turn through North Avenue and walking out strong. But they had a little eye knowing that they are on a mission and that they do have a purpose. And with that, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Black Wax Museum. I want to thank Senator McFadden. I don't know where they left. Senator McFadden, for all your hard work. Marie Washington, your names may never be written all over the place, but I know the role that you want to play. And so, we want to listen. May God bless. And thank you very much. Thank you. 
Western Illinois University, is here with his son, looking at Morgan, Dr. Jack, Jack Thomas. I mean, the, the, we Alabamians have come here to what we call the North. We call Baltimore the South, the North. It's the upper South. But I tell you that because as a teenager, I came here to visit my cousin, the chair of the English department at Morgan, Nick Aaron Ford. And I heard about and got to know that giant Benjamin Quarles. I got to know that wonderful giant I got to know that wonderful giant Judith Taylor and all these brilliant PhDs and they inspired me to want to be like them. And years later to the family of Benjamin Quarles, I need you to know, I brought him to my campus in UBC. I said, if you would just come one day a week, I'll pay you whatever you want. And this is what I just come over with and teach and teach my class. And let me tell you what made brought tears to his eyes and mine. And quite he said it well. He said, Freeman, you don't know this. He said, but I'm a little shy. And the family members know what I'm talking about. He said, I don't want to get in front of a lot of people talking anymore. I've done that part. I want to do my writing. And I resonated with that because as much as you see me out being loud and raising money, this is not about me. I don't want it to be about me. It's about all the people. My grandmothers and granddaddies and mama and daddy, my church and my teachers, my public teachers in Birmingham, who told me not to let anybody else define who I am. Charles Flinders and Pentecost. 